My people, welcome to another episode of your favorite show, You and I Talk Show, with your host, Louise Wacho. And today we're talking success. How does it happen? How does one get there? We're talking to a great entrepreneur. Stay tuned if you ever want to be successful in your life. Welcome. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. Louise Wachu Imana and Wachu Productions. Welcome to the show, my people. Desmond, soon on the show. Am I saying it right, by yes. the way? It's soon. It is soon. Coming soon, going soon, <laughs> opening soon, closing soon. <laughs> yes, so you're a Pan-Asian serial entrepreneur right. and business coach. And let's start by talking about your suit. It looks so nice, so smooth, so clean, the shoes, everything. I mean, you do look like an entrepreneur. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, it, it is, it is a, a custom-made suit, and it's got a memory to it. It actually uh, was at a time when I was doing very well, looking very good, smelling very good and everything, but going through some really tough times in my life. And that's part of the story you know, that uh, success does not come without its failures and its challenges and struggles. So uh, I try to do that, try to inspire people and show them that you can make a comeback mm -hmm. from whatever setback you've had. Yeah, because your thing is that you teach people how to turning setbacks into comebacks. That's correct. So how did you begin? And then the whole traveling between Asia and Canada. Okay, well, I'll give you the shortened down version. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be here forever. You know. But uh, I was born in Singapore. 12 years there. We immigrated here when I was 12 years old. Grew up in Vancouver, acclimated here, loved Vancouver. And then around the age of 23, I started getting this travel bug. I started getting really um, itchy to want to visit Asia again. I wanted to reestablish my roots with Asia. And of course, around that time, I was racing cars and you know chasing girls and things like that. So I looked at different Asian cities which had appeal. And Japan, I knew a girl there. So I, I visited Japan just to visit her. Little did I know that I would fall in love with the city, you know, this big, big apple of Asia, and go over there for business. And my initial goal was just to stay there for about three, four years, you know, just to kind of learn the culture, learn the language, do some business, and then bridge back over to Vancouver. But I never expected I would get stuck there for 12 years, <laughs> getting married, having kids, business, Yakuza, you know, the, the mafia, the Japanese mafia, yeah. big business, small business, bankruptcies, restaurants, yeah. daycares. And, um, but, and I did find myself going through some very hard times in our life. My wife and myself, uh, it, it put a lot of strain on our marriage. It put a lot of strain on our kids. Um, we were owing money, left, right, and center. We had had pretty much two bankruptcies, not officially registered bankruptcies, but in terms of business on the books, it was bankruptcies. And so I decided to pull the ejection seat and come back to Vancouver in 2014, just to kind of clear my head for a bit. I came back for Chinese New Year. And when I did, um, you know, I started to really look at things differently. And so probably the first tip I can give to any of the viewers, if you guys are out there, if you're going through a really rough time in your life, sometimes trying to swim upstream, trying to fight it, is actually not the best thing. Stepping away from the situation, going on a vacation, it seems counterproductive at that moment, but it actually is very refreshing to look at things from a different perspective. Yeah. Right? Like, but a 12-year vacation, though. Yes. <laughs> And I did come back to Vancouver and mm -hmm. I felt that, you know, the city has completely redeveloped after the Olympics. It's beautiful. And uh, I, I decided I would like to reestablish a base of operations here as well. So mm -hmm. I'm back here. So how is it working in, in Japan? I mean, the language, uh, did you have to learn the language or is English enough? And then transferring back to the Canadian system and then the culture. And now you have to come back into the Canadian culture. How is that? The Japanese, because of their success, you know, over the last two or three decades has made them very, and, and as a culture, they're fairly exclusive. I'm not saying that they're not open, but as a culture, they're very protective. And so you have to win their trust. You are always seen as a foreigner. And it was very hard. I had to learn the language. Even though you look a little bit... Uh... All the more if you look Asian. Oh. All the more. 
if you have the classic Caucasian look, uh -huh, uh -huh. you're like the golden child. You've got the blonde hair, blue eyes. You're oh, welcome. Really? That's right. You're oh. the guest. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look Asian, they uh -huh. expect you uh -huh. all the more to speak their language. Oh. And the Japanese have been fairly dominant historically, you know, towards the Chinese and towards the Koreans and other things like that, historically speaking. So, um, you know, they, they expect Asians to step up to their standards. Oh, so they kind of look down. Uh, I wouldn't uh, say that, uh -huh. so I'm not to offend any of my <laughs> Japanese friends. <laughs> And they know I speak openly about that. But, uh -huh. um, I know that there's massive changes. Japan is changing rapidly mm -hmm. and uh, changing with the going the times right now and competing with China and Korea. So they've had to relearn themselves as well. The younger generation are more international. They're more open-minded mm -hmm. and they're struggling to keep up. Mm -hmm. right? But they have things to be proud of. I mean, it's Japan and they are so advanced and they have so many great inventions. So it must be a great environment to learn from and then come back here. Don't you feel like you go Going down a little bit. I mean, once again, I have to be very political about this one because I'm I'm reestablishing my roots in Vancouver. Uh -huh. I don't want to say anything bad about Vancouver, but I won't lie. Uh -huh. um, honestly speaking, I think I was even a little bit arrogant. Just being very humble. When I was in Tokyo, I did have I I, I did look down on Vancouver. I used to think, especially when I was there, I thought I was you know yeah I'm better than everyone. And all those guys are you know Vancouver thinks it's hot, but it's actually just a small city. But, you know, I mean, there is a lot of wealth here. There's a lot of very, very powerful international business people that are here, as well as locals. And I was fortunate enough to know several of the locals even before I left. Uh, I, I had some run-ins, you know, good, good dealings with Mr. Jessel, Brian Jessel, uh, you know, with uh, Siegel family as well, before I left. And that gave me a taste of what, you know, real wealth is. Uh, so I looked up to them. I looked up to their, you know, their empires that they had built in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. But it also made me realize that when I went to Tokyo, Vancouver is not the only market. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you really want to be successful, there are many different levels of success. International success, wow, now you're playing with the big boys. Yes. Right? The big girls and the big boys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll come back and keep talking some more about this. It's fascinating. Success. Everybody wants it. <laughs> Thank you. Talk show with Louise Wachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at wachu.com to be a guest on the show. Welcome back to the show, my people. Desmond Soon mm -hmm. talking about success. So, Vancouver. Yes. So now what are you doing in Vancouver and are you going to stay in Vancouver and why are you so interested in making other people successful? <laughs> wow, so which one would you like me to answer first? Let me start with the Vancouver market. Yeah. Vancouver is my home. I'm Canadian. My two children are Canadian. My wife is not with us, so I am raising the children as a single parent. And I am a full-time stay-at-home dad, a full-time entrepreneur, hence the term, I'm not sure if I'm the original one who coined the term fatherpreneur. Fatherpreneur, there is I a, like the term. Yeah, there is actually another gentleman, if you Google him, he's actually one of my colleagues, one of my peers, and he, I believe, was one of the original fatherpreneurs. And there are other daddypreneurs, fatherpreneurs, daddy bloggers, and other people like that out here. One person in particular, Ricky Shetty, who is a local in Vancouver, and I've reached out to him and we've connected, um, is also a great father. So if anyone's interested in that area, you know, if there's any dad, stay-at-home dads, I would recommend connecting with us or connecting with him to find out more information. But, you know, I mean, the question is, um, is Vancouver my home? Yes, I'm here, but I also see myself as an international jet-setting businessman. <laughs> Now, does that sound like a contradiction, perhaps? And I've asked this several times on my YouTube channel, or my videos, and when I put it out on my social media, what is the definition of a fatherpreneur? Does that make me better than, say, a brick and mortar business owner, a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer who has their own practice, who goes to work, you know, or a mom, doesn't even have to be a dad, it could be any parent, who's working hard for their children. So you're being an entrepreneur, you're trying to find some sort of business to facilitate being a good parent to your children. So that's a very tough question to answer. And I think the best way is for me just to live my life. I'm actually pioneering this whole, this whole industry. And there's going to be many different variations. It's very diverse. There is no right or wrong. So I think we're one of the early adopters. We're, we're creating this new, this new niche, this new uh, term of fatherpreneur. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, instead of, and we're not putting down anyone who still works mm -hmm. you know, and, and has a job and leaves their kids. But I think my definition of fatherpreneur is someone who 
alters, finds opportunities, finds work, finds income to, to, to live and to um, facilitate my life around my children. You want to be able to mix your home life with your business. That's correct. So what are you doing? What are you working in? How are you making money that can afford you? Because it's kind of expensive, right? Are you, are you sure you want to hear the answer? Yes. Okay, because a lot of people, there's a lot of misnomer out in the marketplace right now. I'm an online marketer. Mm -hmm. I'm a full-time online marketer. Mm -hmm. But a couple of months ago, I was actually corporate, I was hired, you know, with uh, Sony of Canada. Mm -hmm. But as you know, Sony of Canada closed up uh, a lot of their stores, their retail stores. So I was laid off. And I had already been building a bit of a presence online, you know, checking things out because there is a lot of skepticism. I don't blame the people who are put off by all this spammy marketing that's going on right now, you know, on Instagram, on social media, on Facebook. Uh, almost every single place you go, you click on something, someone has an offer. Let me show you how to make four or $5,000 a month working from home in your underwear on the beach drinking pina coladas, yes. right? They paint such a beautiful picture. But the reality is, just like Gary Vaynerchuk says, you know, it is hard work. You got to hustle. It's mm -hmm. just like Grant Cardone says, you have to hustle. There's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And not everyone who wants to be an entrepreneur or a stay-at-home mm -hmm. uh, parent or a you know, small business owner mm -hmm. has the discipline, the wherewithal, the know-how, uh, you know, to stay focused, uh, to maintain cash flow. You, you're, you're, you do everything yourself. And if you don't wake up, if you don't have that discipline, you know, so people pay you rate. to do what? Okay, so at the moment, I blog. Mm -hmm. I blog. I have a blog called desmond-soon.com, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a fairly general blog. It's about me. It's about my life. Mm -hmm. And I do give tips to aspiring entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And then from that, from marketing myself, from branding myself, mm -hmm. people reach out to me to mentor them. So I, you know, um, I, I almost feel embarrassed because I'm humbled enough to not, you know, say I'm this big guru. I'm very honored when people reach out to me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a term we, we use called learn, do, and teach. Mm -hmm. Just only 20 months ago, mm -hmm. Louise, I was brand new. I had no idea what I was doing, mm -hmm. but I had to figure it out. But now that I've actually walked the path, I've proven it works. Mm -hmm. I'm in a, and we have income disclaimers and things like that, mm -hmm. legally speaking, for the FTC, mm -hmm. because we are legally compliant, mm -hmm. one of the most legally compliant companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always have to make sure people understand those disclaimers, mm -hmm. which is the number one mistake that most online marketers Marketers mm -hmm. fail to do. Mm -hmm. They overpromise, underdeliver. So you tell people how much you're making. Yes, which I just is like a million dollars a no, month. No, not, not yet. But that's the, that's that's uh -huh. the beautiful thing. Uh -huh. You don't have to be one of those big gurus and making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm very pragmatic myself. I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. I've got two young boys. I'm not looking and chasing after those things. When I was in my 20s, I was, mm -hmm. right? And I, of course, don't get me wrong, if you give me a private jet and a Ferrari, I'd be taking it. And I know I will be having that very shortly. Uh -huh. But in the initial stages, I think there's a bigger market for the average parent that wants to be able to stay at home. You know, you don't have to get both parents, but maybe just one mom mm -hmm. to take that child out of daycare. Mm -hmm. And especially in particular, the, the parents with young children. Mm -hmm. You know, once you've got kids that go to high school and stuff like that, it's, they don't want to be around you. Yeah. But it's in those golden years when your children are between three to say 10, mm -hmm. when they're really adorable, when they're beautiful, they're charming, mm -hmm. that you want to be able to have at least one parent at home with mm -hmm. them. And I do respect a lot of women who work so hard. You know, we've changed over the last decade, 15 years or so, two decades, women have really come to power. In fact, women are more successful at business owners, believe it or not, than men. <laughs> Statistically proven. Let's come back and talk about that. Well, thank you for being here. When we come back, you'll tell us, you know, how to do it. Definitely. <laughs> you and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people please contact info at watcher.com to be a guest on the show. We're back, my people. We're here with Desmond soon. So what do you do in the morning? You wake up. And so what is your job? Because people are going to be like, okay, so what is he doing okay. and how can I do it? Right. Yeah. Okay, so very simply put, okay, what I do, I'm just going to give you a, a a sneak preview into a day in the life of. Yes. I wake up when my kids wake up. So whenever they wake up, they are the ones who jump on the bed and wake me up. But that's not always the case. There are times when, as a business owner, you know, my brain is thinking 24 hours a day. There are times when, and it is international business that I do because it's online, I tend to wake up at four or five in the morning and you know, I'm checking emails or I'm replying or I'm writing a blog. And basically, I give value. 
I find out what problems people have in a niche that appeals to me, something that I'm passionate about. We have a term called cash in on your passion. Mm. Okay, sounds very cheesy and it's cliche, but cash in on your passion. So things that I'm passionate about, especially for a brand new person who does not know what to offer, just focus on what they're good at. They have a story to tell. You see, we're not trying to market to everyone. We teach people, we educate people through training courses how to market anything. It's like an MBA course, mm -hmm. right? Just because you go to an MBA course in university does not guarantee you're going to get a six-figure income at a Fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. It's if you apply that knowledge, it's if you generate enough of a network, you, know, you get your connections and you get introductions to meet a CEO of a company. That's what we do. We train people how to market online. What do you market? Well, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring something to market. Either market yourself, market another company that you're connected with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I have clients, people who are in other deals, other programs, and they've got great products, great services, but they just don't know how to market. They don't know how to target clients. And it's a very important part of uh, selling anything because you need people to know, right? Yes. So let's say I'm an entrepreneur. Yes. And I come to you, okay, I have my show. Yes. What are you going to do? Awesome. Okay, so it's about attraction marketing. These days, most people are turned off by sales, right? The typical cheesy, maybe even something looking like <laughs> me, you know, the, the smooth talker and pitching people, unsolicited pitching, versus the other way around. Now, just picture this in your mind. You've got two different, you know, uh, uh, and it's two different analogies here. One is a hunter-gatherer. He's going out there, they're going to malls, they're, they're pitching friends and family, they're trying to get connections for people to come to their business or service, versus a farmer. A farmer who produces strawberries or corn, something that people want, and then that farmer's farm is off in the distance. No one knows where it is, but they have a billboard set up on a highway, especially on a highway where people are in between rest stops and there's a, you know, it's a greater distance to the next rest stop, so they're hungry. So they'll pull off the highway, they'll go to that person's farm and naturally buy their produce, right? Well, that's what we do. We call it attraction marketing. Mm -hmm. We teach people how to find your target market and how to place yourself in front of those audiences so that you don't have to pitch people, the people come to you first. Okay, so yeah. you would teach me, for example, on how to market myself. Yes. And then that way, I don't have to run after people. You don't have to. But I think naturally for what you do, Louise, you, you naturally market yourself already with, you know, with media and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's about goodwill. It's about branding. It's about being active. It's about being visible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's positioning yourself as an authority, mm -hmm. you know, especially on a certain subject or topic matter. Mm -hmm. And so um, you know, if people are looking up entrepreneurship in Vancouver, they might find your name, okay, on the first page of Google. Well, what are the odds of people going to your website and contacting you or entering their email into your subscriber list, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's a very soft approach and people actually will contact you and it's very targeted. Then you can communicate to that very targeted market mm -hmm. and offer them, say, hey guys, I'm doing a live, you guys can come over and hang out with me. Mm. So what do you tell people to tell them that you are credible in what you're doing? This is why I'm credible, this is how I'm successful, and this is why you should listen to me. True. That is one of the biggest hurdles almost every beginner gets started with. People come in with a lot of uh, self-worth issues. And I don't blame them because the average, you know, average housewife, average uh, you know, worker who's been working his whole life, an engineer, a plumber or something, he's wondering, like, what's so good about me? So there's a lot of personal development that needs to happen as well. People need to develop their own confidence. There's a lot of this fake it till you make it, and I don't agree with that so much. Um, it's very easy just to build goodwill. Give away things that people expect to pay for, but give it away for free, okay? So many times people come in because they're in such a desperate situation for money, they want to get a sale. It's actually reverse thinking. It's actually the whole paid forward system. Go find some answers for people, present them with solutions. They will love you for it. They will start to trust you, and then it slowly snowballs. And it doesn't have to take very long. Mm -hmm. It could be anywhere from three months to six months to even a year, which is actually not very long mm -hmm. in the big scheme of things. But you don't let people work with you for free until they trust you, and then you start charging them. There has to be some charge, mm -hmm. right? Universities will not admit you into a university if you don't pay your tuition. Yeah. Right? So there is a certain... We, we do live in a capitalistic society, yeah. right? And uh, we're not communists. So, you know, you do have to pay for proper okay. education. <laughs> and I was always warned by my mentors, you know, be very careful of the free advice because mm -hmm. that might be the most expensive advice. Mm -hmm. right? So. <laughs> All right, let's take a short break and come back and then you can tell people where to find you and everything like that. Awesome.
you and I talk show with Louise Uachu, we love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people, please contact info at uwacho.com to be a guest on the show. We're back, my people, Desmond Soon. So how much money do you have? How much money do I yes. have right now? Wow, okay. <laughs> because, you know, like we're Can talking about no making, making money and, and things. So have you made money? Yes, okay. absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, without a doubt. And I know a lot of people like to dance around this question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm not a six-figure earner, mm -hmm. okay? But I do have enough, I'll give you a guess. Okay. I do make enough money mm -hmm. more than I made at Sony. Mm -hmm. So if you want to research what the average wage, you know, uh, at Sony and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, is, you can actually find out what I make. So it's not very much, you see. Um, and also, you have to bear in mind that I did have a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. Okay, I came in with just under $100,000 worth of debt, cash. I mean, I'm not talking student loans that can be paid off over 30 years or a mortgage. I'm talking about instant. Come up with $100,000 cash to pay back to the Japanese mafia. Otherwise, we're cutting off your fingers and we're coming in. Yeah, they smashed glass, my, my windshield, my glass and stuff like that, my car. Uh, so it was getting very dangerous for my mm -hmm. kids and myself. So you, are you wanted in Japan? No, not anymore. <laughs> I, 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 I paid my dues. I paid my dues. But, you know, it was through the help of a family friend mm -hmm. that stepped in at the very last moment, literally in the 11th hour at the 59th minute. But why would they have a problem with you? Is this because you're an entrepreneur? You're taking territory from them? No, like, I just borrowed money like, from them. I borrowed, oh, you borrowed I borrowed money. money. Yeah, I jumped out of the... From the, the wrong I, guys. From the wrong people. I was dealing a bit with them in the music industry in, in Japan, and they seemed like really good business partners and friends. And when I went through a tough streak, uh, and we were living a very nice high life, our pride got in the way. We did not want to reduce our lifestyle, get rid of the you know our full-time nanny and babysitter and you know and, and concierge and things like that, and move out to a different condominium or even to a you know an apartment. We wanted to maintain our high style lifestyle. Because of that, you know I we had a bad investment and jumping out of the frying pan into the fire, rather than getting that settled, I went and borrowed money from the wrong people. That put me in, in a very tough predicament. Wow, this is, uh, I mean, this is, it's a great lesson for entrepreneurs. Yes. Don't borrow money from the wrong people. That's right. But it's so hard to start as an entrepreneur. So where do you get the money to start over again, to do your comeback? Okay, so this is it. I actually, you know, with all the glamour, with all the trimmings that we had, I was reduced down to zero. In fact, I was minus 100,000, and I had to start right from the beginning. So that's why the online marketing industry, you know, uh, you got to be really careful out there. There's, a, I would say, 99 out of 100 are kind of weird, shady ones. But there are one or two that are actually good ones, and you can start for a very low cost, like $25 US dollars a month. And I scaled up from that. I actually literally built my entire business on cash flow. 100% cash flow. That was the biggest lesson I took away from mentors like Robert Kiyosaki. Cash flow is king. So I took $25 and I scaled it up. I was used to paying rents, you know, for my restaurant, $35,000 a month, and investing on a restaurant, $500,000 to open a restaurant. And now I had to humble myself to $25 a month and make that work. So I had to make $25, I had to snowball that, and then reinvest, reinvest, and reinvest to the point where you know, I make now a residual income that's more than the average person makes at a job. Mm -hmm. yep. So how many hours do you have to work though? Because it sounds like a lot of work. It's up to you, right? It's really how hungry you are. Okay. The, once you get the engine set up, once you've got the system in place, once you've learned right? Mm -hmm. So many people want to enjoy the rewards without paying the price first. Yeah. So I paid the price yeah, first. Yeah, like I want to be, I want you to tell me and then I want tomorrow morning to see the million dollars in my account. <laughs> when, you, when you actually average it out, yeah. I would say I probably put in about four hours a day, mm -hmm. five days a week, mm -hmm. right? Maybe less. I, I, it's really hard to gauge because I'm always on my social media. I'm one, so is that work or is it just having fun? Yeah. Am I just communicating with friends and people? Am I just being visible? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm there a lot, and uh, but I would say you know, and it's a lot of times it's like webinars or it might be writing content, doing some research. So it's really fun work. You know, it's probably no different than you know, you're in the studio, but you do a lot of research in the back end as well. Yes, and it's like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the 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 similarities. The sweet are. time is when we're taping the interview. There's so much work that goes in before and after. And after right? the post production, exactly. Yes. yes. So where can people find you, and which type of person should want to come and work with you? Good question. Okay, so it's kind of ironic and it's funny. Don't laugh. But if you really want to find me, literally type my name into Google. 
Desmond. You'll find Desmond Tutu first. <laughs> One of my mentors, I, I've always looked up to him. Yeah. He, his name will pop up first. He's the most famous Desmond. Then you'll get Desmond Styles when you hit the space and the S. Uh -huh. He's the guy from One Direction, uh -huh. one of the boy band guys. And then after that, you'll see my name, Desmond, soon. Yes. And I'll be on the first page of Google. You can find me there. Yes. So that's my blog. And then, of course, I've got all my social media that people can follow me on, right? So you can follow me on Twitter, Periscope, at Desmond Soon 77, or my YouTube channel, you know, youtube.desmond-soon.com. Yes, Desmond, thank you so much for being on you and My I. My pleasure. And we'll definitely keep in touch. Yep. And I'll contact you and, and, and see. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm interested in making that money too, right? Of course, <laughs> let's do it. Thank you so much, Louis. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Yeah. My people, it's done. It's been great. So contact Desmond soon. Let's start get, getting that success, you know. Let's make it happen.